Hello, I'm Jay Bowman. I want to thank you for the opportunity to share with you some of the main takeaways from our Q1 forecast for 2024. You know, when it's all said and done and we look back at 2023, we're projecting that total engineering and construction spending will end up 10%, eclipsing the two trillion mark for the very first time. Moreover, this is the third year of a multi-year trend of double digit growth that began in 2021 when it was up 10%, and then 2022 when it was up 12%. Now last year's growth was largely driven by advancement and investment we saw both in the non-residential building sector, as well as in the non-building structure side of things. Perhaps the most intriguing of these was manufacturing. Manufacturing and construction in the U.S. was up 78% in 2023, one out of every 10 construction dollars in the United States. And on the non-building side, every single segment all experienced double-digit growth, ranging from 13% to 31%. Looking ahead to 2024, it's difficult to see a continuation of this multi-year double-digit growth in total engineering and construction spending. In fact, our forecast for Q1 2024 is suggesting a 2% overall increase in spending. Now this comes down to really what we're seeing in terms of contractions, both in the residential and in the private development sectors. You know, single family home construction has averaged roughly 20% of total engineering construction spending over the last decade or so. And for this year, 2024, we're seeing a second year or a continuation of a really sharp contraction that began last year. And then on the private sector side of things, we really saw the development pipeline peak in 2023. Now, because of that, we'll start to see a slowdown in 2024 that will probably extend into 2025 and possibly 26. Now, where this will be most noticeable will probably be in the areas of multifamily as well as on the commercial side. And as we begin to see fewer starts in these areas in 2024, that's also being reflected in the current scores for the Architectural Billings Index, as well as FMI's Non-Residential Construction Index. Both of those currently stand below 50, which suggests a contraction in the marketplace. Despite these challenges, manufacturing, data centers, institutional, and industrial construction will remain at really high levels over the next couple of years. And I think that's why it's so important that we maintain perspective, because even with a 2% increase, we're still talking about historical highs. Even when adjusting for inflation, the next five years look to be five of the 12 highest construction spending years in the United States since 1965. In other words, even going from 10% to 2%, down does not mean debt. So again, I urge you to use perspective as you look at not only this forecast, but any forecast. We can look at some of the good. So for example, rates look to be coming down this year, but where's the friction in that or the challenge? Well, we're still in a volatile sort of repricing period where property valuations are still in flux and lending standards and those types of things, which kind of continue to be a drag on the overall economy both this year and probably next year as well. And then for a lot of companies that operate in this industry, whether it be engineering or construction, too many of them are really dependent on the growth of the overall market to really determine the growth of their organizations. And what are those organizations going to do to manufacture the growth that they need? Well, a lot of firms are looking at things such as diversification, better penetration among their customer base, and other strategies. So I encourage you to download the full report at fmicorp.com where you'll get all the other details. But better yet, I would suggest that you call one of our consultants or one of our investment bankers to discuss what the best growth strategy is for your organization going forward. Thank you.